space. The final frontier. Billionaire Elon Musk has sent three batches of SpaceX Starlink satellites over Ukraine. Well, today, there's a new space race. China now has plans to take over the moon. Today's Blue Origin test run to the edge of space. 50 years after the last moon landing, NASA's uh, Artemis uh, 1 mission is poised to launch on Monday. customers and a former NASA astronaut docking with the International Space Station. The first trillionaire there will ever be is the person who exploits the natural resources on asteroids. And that U.S. space launch companies can fly on their broomsticks. Processing. So what the heck is going on with the billionaire's obsession with space? I don't know about you, but I think we need to take a moment and try and understand what's really behind the obvious space race. Elon Musk, SpaceX, Amazon's Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, Firefly, the money getting thrown around these guys has literally exploded. Governmental space agencies are chucking funds at them alongside the private sector, investment funds, pension funds, the whole shebang. So you see, if our retirement funds hinge on the outcome of Jeff and Elon fighting out in orbit, we owe it to ourselves to get to grips with well, what they're up to. It seems everyone wants in on the space race and space is up for grabs. Billions in the offering from tourism, private research labs, military contracts, mining rare materials to new faster forms of communication. Did you know, by the way, there's even a few companies sending ashes of the deceased into orbit? Cosmic cemeteries, by all accounts, they're pretty reasonable, five to 10,000 per year. Celestis, a mission of purpose, a dream fulfilled. A commemoration of love. The company list, if you're interested, is in my Patreon channel. Death and Taxes. The space race is on, firmly on, arguably because of one company, SpaceX. They have turned the sector upside down and revolutionized the space. It's impressive. These guys are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. These guys are showing the industry that they had it all wrong all, all along. NASA spends a billion dollars building a rocket and they simply let it burn up in re-entry to Earth. You don't fly a jumbo jet to Australia, then scrap it. Reusable rockets landing back down to Earth to fly back into space a week later is how you make space accessible to all. And they're doing it. Much like Tesla cars, it's all about the software. I digress. So, it got me thinking. What are they actually up to, what are they really up to, occupying Mars aside? Is SpaceX sending up some 12,000 mini internet satellites just to deliver internet to remote areas of the globe, Starlink? Or is there something else, a bigger picture? What are we missing? Don't get me wrong, ubiquitous internet is great for the entire population and I can only imagine highly profitable down the line, but there has to be something, something we're missing. You see, a space internet network or, or constellation covering the globe is in its own right an internet and arguably more efficient and cost effective. So, so what? Well, the internet is, well, everything. But the problem with the internet as we know it is that it's getting increasingly less secure and totally overtaken by bots software mimicking humans. 50% of internet traffic, in fact. Some argue that in the not so distant future, we will not be able to distinguish between reality and fiction or real or fake. Check this out. YouTube had such high bot traffic that some employees feared the inversion. The point when its system would start to see bots as authentic and humans as inauthentic. Like, go figure. It's not good. So building a new and possibly more efficient, secure internet connecting every corner of the globe may well have an edge on a few things. May well have an edge on decentralizing the net or part of it, an edge for cryptocurrencies possibly, and the financial sector, an edge. How this could be the answer to the entire world adopting crypto mainstream, changing how we buy, sell, transact, and save. There's a lot more to Starlink Internet than just providing the internet to remote corners of the globe. 
and it will impact our lives in many ways for the better. So don't go away, I'm just getting started. Oh, and all you flat earthers, look away now. One small step for man. Four, three, two, one, zero. Landing sequence initiated. Mission complete. This is the holy grail of rocketry. Okay, I have it under good authority that the world is not flat and that the internet actually is not in the clouds. Call me crazy. But the internet is actually 1990s infrastructure, a mesh of thick cop and fiber optic cables laid across the ocean floors, connecting continents and, and countries. In fact, over one and a half million kilometers of cables crisscross our oceans connecting the internet today, costing billions shared between a consortia of operators and international carriers. Even private companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Google, band together to deploy their own fiber optic cables in order to secure sort of high-speed data transfer between well, all their data centers. Did you know cables connecting the US and Europe span over six and a half thousand kilometers, 4,000 miles? I mean, the longest being 39,000 kilometers of see me, we in the Asian Pacific connecting Europe. The distance between London and Sydney and back. The point is, the demand for subsea cable routes is on the rise and it's a challenge to keep up with the ever skyrocketing volumes of internet traffic. And the problem is with all these cables, it's the sheer length of them, limiting the speed of the internet called latency. So the thicker the hose pipe, the more water runs through at any given time, bandwidth. Whilst the longer the hose pipe, the more time it takes for the water to reach the other end, latency. We need speed. Video conferencing, gaming, virtual reality, 4K porn, it's all about speed. Oh, and the finance industry, stock traders. Check it out. This is the internet. And this is just the subsea cabling. There's a hell of a lot more cable over land. Now that we know what the internet actually is, it's important to understand who gets it and why. This bit actually shocked me. Taking the most advanced economy in the world as reference, over 50% of the US still have no access to high-speed internet or broadband. Internet service uh, providers or telecoms deliver that last mile and it's costly. And in a lot of cases, they simply don't justify the high cost of installation. Some Americans are still using dial-up modems. The difference between having and not having access to broadband internet is known as the digital divide. And strangely enough, it's not getting a whole lot better over time. So densely populated areas, cities, get all the attention. Fiber optics, 5G, great restaurants. If you live in the sticks, you're literally stuck. So given how important the internet is to participate in society today, work life, homeschooling, this digital divide is a huge issue globally. Isolated and poor communities suffering way, way worse. You see, it's two problems wrapped in one, accessibility and affordability. The further away from densely populated areas, the higher the cost of access, if you get access at all. So to combat this, as far back as the early 2000s, a few companies stuck some satellites high, high above us to beam the internet, much like sat TV, at a huge cost, mind you. But in order to do this, they had to be in a fixed position high, high above us. Bear with me, this is nuts. To remain at a fixed position following the, the Earth's rotation, satellites had to orbit, or have to orbit, at 35,000 kilometers, 22,000 miles above the Earth, and travel around 11,000 kilometers, 9,000 miles per hour, in sync with the Earth's rotation at the equator in what's called geostationary orbit. This is a long way and explains the high latency or lack of internet speed. The round trip journey of a signal is 70,000 kilometers or 44,000 miles. So it's fair to say satellite internet of yesterday is only really good for surfing the internet. Zoom calls, gaming, anything that requires sending and receiving data in real time suffers immensely. 
crazy expensive for what you get, period. And arguably not the answer to the digital divide. So remember, two prong problem, accessibility and cost. Luckily, some far out guy called Elon. The reason I started SpaceX was to get humanity to Mars. We want to try to make the dream of space accessible to anyone and ultimately making science fiction not fiction forever. Welcome to low Earth orbit mega constellation satellites. A network of thousands of mini satellites at the lowest possible orbit beaming super fast unlimited internet across the globe orbiting at just 500 kilometers not 35,000. So low, in fact, the distance is a fraction of even terrestrial cables and a fraction of the distance of yesterday's geostationary satellites. Trust me, the future of communication is about to get an overhaul. Literally change how we communicate, interact, access and distribute data and information. Transcending the internet as we know it. The possibilities are mind blowing. So stay tuned for next week's episode. We're gonna take a deep dive into SpaceX Starlink satellites. I'm gonna tell you how this will impact all of us and what SpaceX is really up to. So subscribe, hit that bell icon. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. May the force be with you. Peace. And ultimately making science fiction not fiction forever.